Welcome everyone. We're going to start about three minutes after the top of the hour here. So it, while we're waiting for everybody to come in, if you just want to drop in the chat where you're coming in from today, maybe what you're hoping to get out of the webinar today. We'd love to hear from you so we can start getting appointed here. So I'll start and uh, okay, here we go. Finally have a brave person here. We got Brittany from Mississippi. Uh -huh. Prakash, you're real funny from Sunny's Names, uh, Los Angeles, Massachusetts, San Diego. Now I would believe them if they said San Diego was sunny. Northern Virginia, Florida, Poland. Okay, there's our first another international person. New Jersey, Barcelona. Welcome, Maryland, Stockholm. Thanks to those of you who are coming in later in your day, Romania, or Sweden, Arizona. So just welcome everybody. And for those of you who are just coming in, if you wanna drop in the chat where you're coming from and um, maybe what you're hoping to get out of the session today. And we will use the Q&A functionality for questions today so we can kind of keep all of those uh, wrangled into one place. I see Saucy has already gone out there and um, put in a question. If any of our panelists want to address the questions while they're coming in there right now, you can feel free to do that. Oh, Nina, Wisconsin, not too far from me here in Minnesota. And Allentown, India. All right, so we'll just give it a couple more minutes here. Yes, yeah, soft skills are more important than ever, indeed. Somebody coming in from Houston, Bangalore, Missouri's in the house, okay. Okay, Belong Mel is very much interested in soft skills and set him apart from other applicants in the job market. That's a good plan. All right. Um, Canada, there we go. All right, so we are a couple minutes after the hour. I'm going to go ahead and get us kicked off here. I'm your host today. My name is Brita Koch. I'm a long-term ServiceNow person. Uh, coming up on 15 years later this month, month next month. Um, and I have a great panel here with me of MVPs and rising stars who are going to help us moderate this uh, session today. So let's get diving into it here. Why do tech people need soft skills? So first of all, I'll kind of give an overview of the agenda here. So we'll do some introductions of our panel. Um, we'll do some polls. You know, we'll ask you how you identify soft skills. We'll talk about why you need soft skills. Then we're going to go into breakout rooms. So we'll have a uh, one of our panelists will be in each of the breakout rooms, and then you'll be automatically assigned to a breakout room where you can have a discussion. Um, because I, we had about 500 people registered for this webinar, so I wanted to make sure everybody felt like they could actually get a voice. So we're just going to um, go into the breakout room so that we can make sure everybody gets a chance to talk, hopefully. And after we come back at the breakout rooms, we'll talk about some resources and how you can get some soft skills. And then we'll open it up for general Q&A. And I'll also be running a poll to ask you what topic you would like us to address in our next session next month. So without any further delay, we'll go ahead and get started and we'll introduce our panelists here. So Susan, would you like to kick us off? Sure. So I am Susan Britt. I lead our HRSD practice at Info Center, and I am based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. Sandy? Hello, everyone. This is Sandeep Betta. I know you must be familiar with my face. So uh, I'm working as one of the enterprise architect and uh, still kicking in with all the modules. All right. Thanks, Sandy. John? I'm Feist. Um, I am as we call it, the ServiceNow team at Integra Life Sciences, been doing it for a little over seven years now. All right, and Rampriya? Hi, I'm Rampriya from uh, Massachusetts. 
um i'm working on uh, university of massachusetts um i'm a lead developer i'm also working all the modules in service now also custom applications and um, jerry hi everyone um so jerry i'm from the uk so working at university of birmingham um i'm a product owner looking after mainly it service management hr service delivery ITAM, uh, hardware asset management, software asset management, and obviously working with the business and our developers. Awesome. And last but not least, because he's at the end of the alphabet, Willem. Yeah, always at the end. Uh, Willem Seiler, I'm a certified master architect, uh, four times MVP. So indeed, uh, in the past 10 years, involved all across the platform. Uh, I'm uh, usually on the technical side, uh, but I like to uh, get involved in the soft skills uh, as well. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go into our first poll here, and that is going to be asking you um, what you think are soft skills. So let me go ahead and launch this. And this is a short answer question, um, so you can just put drop in here um, what you think are soft skills. Is everybody able to get in? I'm not seeing any answers come through yet. There we go. All right. So we'll give that a couple of minutes while we, you can go in there and answer those. Some of the things that we had talked about when we were creating this webinar was thinking about like active listening, adaptability, and increasingly with Cross cultural, global teams, you know, understanding other cultures is really important. Um, anybody else want to jump in here? I define soft skills as kind of those interpersonal skills, how you interact with other people and help you succeed in those relationships. So. Well, one of the main ones for me is about is uh, active listening. I think it's again working with our developers, working with business stakeholders, um, really kind of articulating and really kind of um, understanding clearly what's being requested rather than um, having to go back and forth and, and obviously waste time once you've developed something, you have to go back again to understand those requirements again. One of the soft skills is adaptability. It's the ability to adjust uh, new conditions, new changes, and uh, challenges um, effectively. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, effectively. And connected right. to that, I think also knowing yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, like knowing if you don't have soft skills, how can you work on trying to get those, even though it's maybe not, maybe you're a super technical person and you'd rather just deal with code. Um, do yeah, what so just Susan mentioned it's about the interpersonal skills so whenever we are talking about the interpersonal skills we should always look at a very biggest word which is empathy so I think we'll be discussing more in this terms I'm going to go ahead and end the poll here because it looks like the responses have slowed down and um, I'll take a look here at some of the responses that we got so um one person said being able to interact with the person with the language that they understand and listen to the person's feedback, uh, the ability to communicate and connect with your peers, leadership, analytical, interpersonal, basic understanding of a tool, professionalism, um, active listening, empathy, ability to convey information, meet customers' needs and expectations, ability to manage relationships. Um, so a lot of themes here around communication, active link thinking, ugh, critical thinking, um, active listening, collaboration, um, people-oriented skills. Let's look at ability to read people, non-technical. So we got a wide range of things here, but also still some uh, general themes here, a lot of it around communication, because I think we've all experienced situations where technical people have been trying to get requirements and um, they speak in tech speak and your business owners speak and uh, do not speak in tech speak. Um, so I was going to try to build a word cloud live while we were doing this, but um, I'm constrained technically this morning, shall we say. Um, so I created this word cloud to kind of capture some of the things that we had talked about 
um, as a group that we wanted to um, bring into this conversation with you. So the next question is, is why do people need soft skills? Um, and we kind of started to open that up a little bit during the poll, but I'm just gonna let each one of our panelists go around and say, you know, which soft skill they think is most important and why. So I want to go first. So for me, the biggest thing would be empathy. Because, you know, uh, it is no surprise that we are living in a very fast paced and rapidly growing uh, tech world where maintaining empathy can be a significant challenge. So uh, sometimes what we have found is tech professionals, especially, uh, we fail to keep up with the constant technological advancements. Well, the importance of empathy often takes a backseat. So uh, these are the challenges which I have seen personally in my career and uh, stress is very much inevitable. And in an industry, especially the tech industry, where tight deadlines, high stake projects, and the constant needs of the innovation can lead to very high pressure and burnout, what I've seen. So in those scenarios, I think uh, maintaining empathy uh, is a very difficult task. However, you know, we need to create a tech environment uh, which can actually promote open and honest communication, thus maintaining empathy. So that is something which is, uh, for me especially, will be taking the first seat, which is maintaining the empathy and creating an environment where people can interact and you know, talk to each other in a right way or respect what the other person is for talking. So that is very important for me especially to maintain that environment. If I can throw two cents in. So I think one of the other really big things is if you're just going to sit there and say, I'm a developer, give me the requirements and I'll implement them, you're significantly limiting yourself. Because in a lot of cases, you know, especially when you're talking about something like ServiceNow, where the underlying principle is making the world of work work better, you should be in a position to be able to look at somebody coming, I need to, something to do this, 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 and this. And you can look, should be able to look at that and say, well, we can do that. However, if we make this change or consider this, we open up these possibilities, look at the other things we can do, implementation gets done faster, and all the rest of it. And on top of that, it becomes easier to maintain or whatever else. So, you know, you, you really need to be able to, as we said earlier, to talk to people, to understand requirements and be able to propose alternatives that might result in a better outcome. And I think when we were talking, uh, brainstorming on this session, I remember you had this phrase, John, click, click, click. It's not just click, click, click. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I'll jump in on that one. Feeding off of that, like my favorite soft skills, probably when you don't think about when you're listing out soft skills is kind of like curiosity, becoming that lifelong learner where you, you become very truly curious and you want to understand. So you're asking questions, you become kind of Socratic in nature. Um, because then when the client is giving those requirements, John, to your point, it's like, you don't want to just be that click, click, click or taker, right? We want to understand like, what is your problem statement? What is your use cases? Um, and then, you know, understand their desired outcomes and their objectives, that why behind it. And when you're asking those questions, the reason you want to do that is one, you're building that trust with that client, your customer, whether they're internal or external. And then from you, your, your benefit as the developer or, you know, this process owner is you can then architect, build, and really know how to test the solution, right? Because you really understand all aspects of it and you, you're more efficient. You're not having that back and forth like, oh, I developed something based on this one requirement they gave me, but now we got the back and forth because yes, that worked, but I forgot to tell you X, Y, and Z also. Um, so asking those questions is very important. And, and you can tell when applications have been developed without that rigor 
Um, I always use the example of the Ulta beauty um, salon when you try to book appointments. And I know there's a lot of guys on the, the call who may not relate to that, but just think of it as like, you want to take your car into service and you have to set up a different appointment for each thing you want done. You know, you want the tires rotated, you got to set up an appointment, you want the oil change as a different person. And the system doesn't give you an overview of anybody's availability. It just like, you got to go pick your date and time. And then it just comes back and says, no, one of the people isn't available at that time. And then you have to start all over from the beginning. You know, it's, it's clearly a system that was designed with people not understanding how the user is going to interact with a system. So um, anybody else want to jump in here? Yeah, I was going to say, Rita, um, for one of the soft skills, it's really just also, I think, understanding you know, in the world today that we live in, there's a lot of neurodiversity, there's a lot of accessibility concerns, and it's again just really understanding who your user types are. That's how that's using your services or the things that you are designing. So a lot of times when I've worked in um, the IT sector, and it's a case of, yeah, we've got our requirements, we're just going to design something as part of that, but we haven't really, again, using some of our understanding and our skills to really understand, okay, have we develop something that is really accessible for everyone um, not just for the everyday user um, because that's where again some of those uh, user groups do get missed out um, I want to make sure you know we give them a, a good experience a bit you know good employee experience um, but also ensuring that you know the developers or the teams are then trained and specialized going going forward on that 100 percent yeah, maybe to add to that, uh, we also spoke about uh, uh, next to emotional intelligence, the cultural intelligence. And uh, so being aware of those differences also in culture, I think it's key. Uh, the, the key insight is uh, don't treat people like you yourself would like to be treated. No, treat them like they would be treated. Uh, if, if I look at my, uh, I'm from the Netherlands to the Dutch culture, they're quite direct, quite output driven, for example. Uh, and a lot of cultures are more also on the relationship, uh, respecting that, asking how was your week, how is it going, before diving on topic, a small change in conversation uh, can, can take you uh, uh, quite far as well. Definitely. Also, in uh, emotional intelligence, if you go with um, self-awareness, self-regulation, and uh, motivation also important. Uh, soft skills, because uh, if um, self uh, awareness if we, let's say like uh, we can recognize and understand ourself our emotion how which will uh, reflect our thoughts and behavior same way our self-regulation it's ability to manage or uh, redirect our uh, destructive emotions so think before we act on a uh, in some um, situations also our uh, motivation being uh, which is um our motivation will drive our uh, um, path, which uh, we will go with uh, our self-accomplishment instead of uh, external rewards. This is uh, some of the soft skills I would have. Uh, yeah. This is a I, I would add one other why, thing to why do you need soft skills? Because, you know, unless you are in that kind of mega tech role, which anybody attending this meeting, I doubt, is. You know, I'm thinking more like the folks at Microsoft, Oracle, whatever, who are building the languages, the platforms, and all of that at the, the grunt level. If you don't have the soft skills, you're seriously limiting your career options because, you know, you'll just basically be viewed as an order taker and never as a leader. And, you know, leader can be a very broad term who people can go to to say, hey, can you help me with this? And a lot of those things make a huge difference when you're in the corporate world. Yeah, I just agree with what just John mentioned. You know, uh, that's where the collaboration comes into the picture. So in the more collaborative environment it is, I think uh, much more innovative ideas or you can learn from your peers, all of these actually helps. Yeah, we would say that as an active listener, active listening skill is Sandeep. Yes. 
And to get back to John's point, um, I had a manager once when I was in a more technical role who had no interpersonal skills. And I had a lot. And um, people used to say I was the best PR thing that ever happened to him. <laughs> so it is important to have those tech skills because even though he was at a higher level than I was, obviously he was my manager, he had difficulty communicating with people. So um, I think is... uh, most of the people will love to have this particular soft skill, what you just mentioned, Brita. <laughs> now, <laughs> teaching your manager is always a very difficult job to do. And you did that. <laughs> You know, yeah, we the, can. Yeah, we can build a yeah, active storytelling a soft skill, which will make a presentation or a colorful uh, um, reports, so that we can uh, uh, convince our manager. <laughs> that is the one soft skill I used to do practice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, I want us to have some time to interact um, with our our expert panel individually. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring up a poll that you can answer and I'll be setting up breakout rooms and each one of our panelists will be in a breakout room and you'll be automatically assigned to a room and then have discussion, um, a little more intimate discussion in that room. And we'll stay in those rooms for maybe 10 to 12 minutes. Um, so let me go ahead and get the poll up here. And, while you, and then there will be a, a pop-up window that'll come up to ask you to join the breakout room. So um, just make sure that you look for that because we had a little confusion on the last call. Um, great, my mouse is, my polls have locked up. There we go. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So here is our poll. And while that's going, I'll go ahead and set up the breakout rooms. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I did it wrong. I only did one, one room. Hold on. Uh. Okay, the breakout room should be open now. Um, so panelists, if you can get into the room that you've been assigned. And then other folks you'll be auto assigned as you opt in. So if there's any trouble getting into the breakout rooms, please drop that in the chat. Otherwise, I'll assume everybody's getting into a room. Sandeep, can you go into room number two? And Jordan, can you go into room number three just to moderate? Of course. Thank you. Uh, I mean, the option. What would be helped? Um, let me see if I can assign you. Where are you? Have the option. I can't find you in my list. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Let me go to the news. Oh. Um, can you bring up the breakout rooms? Not seeing you to the breakout rooms. Okay, here you are. You're... All right, I'm going to make you a, a co host. And now, can you bring up the breakout rooms? Yes, 
So I see the poll. I see one unassigned, which is me, that says you're assigned to a room, which is weird. Um, well, I don't know what's going on. As your co-host, you should be able to. I'm the only person who's showing up as unassigned. Everybody else is showing up as being in the room. So it's like you're not here, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, since there's nobody in room two except Maria, I'm going to go and jump in there um, and just see how it's going. And I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> All right, Maria's got it under control in there. So I'm going to jump into another breakout. I don't see the option at all for breakouts. Um, do you, at the bottom of the screen, do you see a more option? Yeah. Do you see like, um, yeah, if you click oh, on them. Yeah, and so a couple over. Um, like to the left of that, you'll see breakout rooms. Uh, you're talking about the ones which is there, right? Uh, like record polls, settings, incoming video. Like what? No, I'm sorry. I sent you the wrong place. At the bottom of the screen, um, like the third from the right is breakout rooms. I see Q&A. Okay. I, I don't know what's happening. Because yes. <laughs> I, I search for like you. Okay. Mm. I can't assign you to a room because you're not showing up as unassigned. So I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to leave you here <laughs> and, <laughs> and see how Ram Priya is doing.
Yes, let's please. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that people were not in a breakout room. Um, the breakout room functionality says that everybody is assigned. Um, so if there's still people in this room, um, you can feel free to pipe in here. I'm terribly sorry. Now let me unmute. Yeah, I'm still here. So All right, so sorry about that. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions for Sandeep or myself about soft skills or what, or want to make a comment on what you think is important? So I, I do have a question. I don't know if um, any of you are technical and how are you balancing the technical with the soft skills aspect of it when it comes to communicating with end users who don't know very much technical about especially ServiceNow? Well, that's a very valid question. And it's, uh, it's kind of a common question for any implementation which you are doing, I think. Right. So let's say your stakeholders are someone who is experiencing service now for the first time and you want to explain something and uh, they are not very technical. So I would say what I uh, especially do is I take an approach of very layman language where I do not talk about any technical uh, jargon, especially like, you know, we are going to use a business tool. We are going to use a client script. I don't do that. So especially what I do is. So let's say if you want to do certain things at the UI level itself, let's say you want to make certain fields mandatory or read only. So we'll just talk about here, look at the screen. This is not something uh, which we are going to do as part of our uh, technical things or technical aspirations, whatever we have. We'll just focus on what we are going to do as part of this form itself. How we are going to do, that is something which we will learn together as a team maybe. Um, because anyways, service now is that easy to learn. But, you know, I have seen people who are very much non-technical who doesn't know service now. They can pick up service now in not more than three months. So uh, as the days pass on, they eventually get to know what are the uh, service now special jargons which we are talking. But I'll take an example of a very layman term. Like this is what the UI is. This is how it looks like. And this is what we are going to do. How we are going to do, that is something which we are not going to talk to them at the very first call or maybe first month itself. We'll eventually get to know. I think one of the things that I do in those situations too is I try to eliminate any IT lingo when I'm explaining to people how the platform works. Um, because I think in IT, you know, we have our own language and, um, sometimes we get a little caught up in that, that we're, we're cool and we have our own language, um, but, <laughs> or, or we just forget. Um, and so I think it's good to try to use human language instead of technical language to explain things to people because they're already feeling intimidated and, you know, by using normal language that I think helps them feel less intimidated. Um, Mark, feel free to come off, um, you, you want to chat. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I find it challenging to try to, <laughs> to try to make teammates on projects better. So it's hard to kind of even broach the subject of, hey, you need to listen more uh, <laughs> in order to, to be a better project teammate. So <clears throat> it's, it's, it's hard on soft skills to try to tell somebody that they need to improve their soft skills. Oh, uh, yeah. oh go ahead, Stefan. No, 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 sorry. I, I was going to add, but I'm not now. Um, I think one of the other things, Mark, and um, I think Willem uh, alluded to this in the main discussion, but, you know, it's going to help your career. 
Um, so if you can try to give them the whiff them, you know, what's in it for them that, you know, by building these soft skills, they can actually take their career further than if they don't have them. And I think a lot of people look at, you know, the help desk service desk as, you know, a byproduct of IT. However, I think it's more foundational because what I do with my team, it doesn't matter what technical skills they have, but do they have the soft skills? Because our environment is so complex and different than any other environment. There's no way you can come in with those technical skills ahead of time. So if you have the soft skills and the potential and the ability to learn, you know, that is the best foundation because everything is so automated now that, you know, you just don't have a group of developers, you know, turning out projects. Now, what does the support look like? How do we relate this back to the customer? You know, are we meeting the stakeholder needs? So it's about relationship building and being able to read the room. Mm -hmm. And I like to join yeah. in on meetings with my team. You know, I'm like, have your chat open because I can see things that they may not pick up on, you know, yeah. just to help them build their self-awareness. 100%. Yeah, that's where I was talking about empathy, right? So uh, when you look at the service desk or the first level of support, they really don't need any technical skills at the first, very first days of their early careers. I think the first, very first thing which they uh, need to know is how they are talking to the people. So to understand, don't give sympathy, but empathy works there. So you need to understand being at their shoes, what they might be feeling right now, and then probably help the particular employee or maybe the customer who is coming to you. And now uh, when you spoke about the different meetings which we attend, and you know, uh, there are a few situations which uh, I can give you from my experience. Uh, there are two situations where I found that uh, a fellow team member of mine, they were not uh, understanding the situation. They, they were not reading the room and they were talking around a different context altogether. So that's where, you know, teams messaging uh, really help where uh, we can guide them that this is not something which you are actually talking right now. Uh, probably we can talk this uh, in a different session or maybe we can take it offline. So you can stop them right away being in the meeting if they are not able to see the messages which you're doing, trying to protect them. But uh, you can always go back and tell, let's take this offline. That's actually a magic wand, which always works for me. I'd just like to add one thing that's in, I found interesting that we mentioned about, you know, protecting, not protecting, but using non-technical language and speaking with stakeholders. I do think we have a responsibility as platform owners to also educate uh, mm -hmm. using yeah. soft skills. So, for example, I've had a lot of experience in delivering catalog items for our stakeholders. They often have no idea how to build them, but it doesn't mean mm -hmm. I then protect them from words like variables or, or flow. You know, I often yeah. find that if I teach them once, then the next time they want something, they're they're very, very capable of then requesting it and starting to use that language. And I think soft skills is not only about, you know, you translating technical language into non-technical language. It's also about using your, your uh, words to educate our users and our stakeholders to be better on the platform uh, because yeah. often people request things or want things that they don't understand. And if you spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes with them, helping them understand, then they'll not only understand where you're coming from, but also be more willing to put in more effort to, to kind of design their own areas in a bit of a better way than uh, than they would do before. Oh, well, that's a great point. And, you know, I'm glad you added that because that is, you know, you, I feel like you explain things to them and then you start to bring them in, you know, and, and telling them what the terminology is because then they can request the right things and you don't have those miscommunications. Well, did they, did they want a new catalog item or did they want something else? You know, so that's a really excellent point. Yeah, what, what I found was we had no process for catalog items and we ended up designing uh, a, um, a template and sent it to users and asked them to try and do it themselves. And a lot of them couldn't do it. And then right. all it took was a half an hour call and then they were able to fill it all in. And what we found was we weren't getting testing failures. We weren't getting incidents. We were suddenly getting greatly designed, really well worked catalog items just from spending investing half an hour per stakeholder. It's a small investment for big gains. Oh my gosh. 
And to your point, you know, the question you were bringing up earlier, Mark, you know, I mean, taking that time to understand can improve the relationship and actually make people's lives easier as they're trying to be, you know, developing applications. What about when you're working with stakeholders who are technical? I've had some struggles with stakeholders who have a lot of technical ability, but not a lot of platform familiarity. And so are they like trying yeah. to uh, solution for you because they think they know things technically? Yeah, pretty much. Or saying, oh, this should be easy when it's something that's difficult for the platform because of, you know, different design choices than the places they're familiar with or uh, complaining about platform behaviors without sort of understanding the underlying reason for those. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, that is probably because they might have worked on a particular platform for a very good time and they're switching over or migrating to service now. Uh, for the very first time. So they understand that, okay, this is something which should be working like how I used to work in my previous platform. So uh, that becomes a challenge. Yes, this is quite interesting challenge because they are technical, very much technical indeed, because uh, the people who are fond of a particular platform, they always tend to have uh, a tendency to compare things, what they used to do in previous sessions or previous experience. So I think, uh, what we can suggest them is to uh, adapt to what they are going to uh, use currently. And uh, let's talk about or focus uh, around what are the speciality uh, which this platform is able to provide you. You know, the platform awareness is very much required where we can help them. It's also defining specific roles and responsibilities. Uh, uh, currently working in an organization where it isn't defined and it's a, it's a nightmare to sometimes define the edges of responsibility between technical people and myself. Um, that, you know, as a, as a platform owner, where does my scope of responsibility end and the architects start? So mm -hmm. who's responsible for, for translating those stakeholder requirements? Who's then responsible for refining them? And then who's responsible for signing off on them? And it, you need to define that, that Racky model. Otherwise, it, you, you really struggle. Yep. And that's, that's true yep. with most projects, right? You know, if you don't have it defined, then things just aren't going to work. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I see Randy has raised hand. Please go ahead. Thank you for that, Sandy. So I kind of uh, sort of, uh, in a way, empathize to the role of a platform owner because uh, I, I have been in that function, right? Okay. One of the challenges that I face is uh, my role is not considered as a critical part of the organization. And so whenever we give them architectural guidance, right? Someone will say, that's a philosophical conversation, just like, and this is my favorite topic because a lot of people like to get notified via email, right? When something happens. But one of the things in the platform is that depending on the channel you're, you're feeding, you know, an, a request item or, or an incident, right? It writes to a different comment attribute depending on which table it's supposed to go to. Uh, problem is they would like to get everything written down into an email template, which becomes a problem. And the challenge that I have is how do I convince these people to really listen and say a notification is a notification, which means something happened, right? I'm notifying you, go to the actual record in the platform, to look at the details, right? That's that's the fundamental foundation of, of, of what we do, right, Sandeep, unless right. I am wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. And everybody, I'm really sorry, but I got to bring us all back together so we can wrap up and get onto the open Q&A. So I apologize, I'm going to close all the rooms and bring everybody back together. Oh, never, yep. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm really sorry to close the rooms. I know there's some great discussions going on out there. Um, so, um, but we did have to keep moving along here. Um, so um, I just thought you might want to see what the results were on the skills um, poll that I ran. So it looked like um, business process knowledge communication was our top uh, missing soft skill. Um, 
So let's keep moving along here though, so we can get through our presentation. Um, the next question I have for you is, um, you know, what skills are most valued at your organization? Um, you wanna just drop that into the chat because my, something happened to my menus when I came back from the breakout rooms. In fact, I can't even see the chat now. I'm so sorry, everybody. I am new to using the breakout rooms and the webinar feature in Zoom, and I have some challenges with it sometimes. And then I, um, like for instance, last time I found out part of the reason I had an issue was because I couldn't, um, I didn't have access to it. So it wasn't uh, something I could fix on my own. Um, I think what I'll do is maybe I'll try ending the slideshow and restarting it, see if I can get Nope. Well, that's strange. Um, all right, could somebody read out to me put in the chat about what soft skills are most valued? Did we get any response? Did anybody put anything in the uh, chat? Yeah, Tanya put in responsiveness communication. Okay. Anybody else? Our most valued empathy and respect in communication. Okay. All right. Well, since I have a technical issue here, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next slide, which is our resources. Um, you may be saying, okay, we've talked about these soft skills. How do I get these? Um, so these are some of the resources that we like. There's some training courses we brought up about how sales training has a lot of transferable skills for IT people. Actually, if you think about it, there's a list of books here that kind of come from a gamut of different areas. And um, it does seem self-promoting that Winner's Dream is up here by Bill McDermott, but that was actually not a, my suggestion. Um, and then there's some really interesting TED Talks. Um, two of the authors that I really like are Adam Grant and Francis Fry. Um, Adam Grant has a whole work life series and one of his most well known ones is the how to not be an asshole at work, um, but he has a lot of other really good ones and Francis Fry um, talks a lot Hi, about Britta, I'm sorry to just yeah. uh, interrupt you I can't, we can't see the slide that you're presenting. Oh. All right, what has happened here. Um, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I really did like watch a bunch of webinars on how to do breakout rooms and everything today because I didn't want to have any technical issues this time. Oh my gosh. Now we can see it. Yeah, we can, we can see it now, Britta. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, and now I've got my menu back and everything. So thank you. Um, and then the, the last suggestion we had here was to find a mentor, mentee. Um, one of the things that we talked about or a tool talked about in a, a session yesterday with the, I forget if it was the MVPs of Rising Stars, about how you can learn from your mentee as well as, you know, being a mentor. So it can be kind of a cool um, two-way street there. So now I have my polls back. I can run my poll here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this poll and ask you to vote for what you would like to be our topic next month. And while you're answering that, um, then we can just go ahead and go into our open Q&A. So um, please raise your hand if you have a question for one of our uh, panelists and we'll have a little um, open Q&A time here. Anybody, don't be shy. Oh, thank you, Trisha. You're having empathy. <laughs> so it seems like our session was helpful, that we could send our message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I couldn't even see the chat to see you all telling me that the screen sharing wasn't working because the chat had disappeared. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Um, well, yeah, anybody have any other questions? I know we did have to cut off the the groups. Um, 
So we wanted to keep things moving. It I looks like a question in chat, Britta, from Scott Carver. Um, he actually asked okay. me a question, I think. Um, so he's asking me, in your experience as a platform owner, do you find there are certain soft skills you lean further into when dealing with more technical people, architects and developers? Um, so Scott, yeah, I can I can answer that one. Um, I think especially when you're speaking and to the business as well, to our stakeholders, because when they're explaining what they want as part of their requirements, because obviously they just want their business outcomes, um, is obviously, you know, your job as well is to really kind of understand, you know, again, you know, what, what they're asking for, what those, again, you know, acceptance criteria, what they're trying to achieve, and really kind of, you know, using your own kind of communication skills able to translate that knowledge, obviously using your own service now knowledge, speak, and again, you know, articulation to those architects and to those developers um, very clearly what is required because what you don't want them to do is start to build and develop the wrong thing. But again, if you are working more of a, an agile framework, then again, you can have some of those kind of show and tell sessions for uh, your developers to kind of show them to make sure they're not building the bridge in the wrong direction or meeting in the wrong direction. Hopefully that answers that question, Scott. Looks like it does. And then Scott has a question, um, and this is up in the air, I think. Is a platform owner usually more technical or functional? Which is a great one. I think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, you know, it, it, it really depends on the circumstances. Um, you know, and it, this goes back to some of the other points that were made, which is, it gets it really comes down to what is be, what is the the topic the question and who is your audience because you know if you're talking to a bunch of business side people and you start talking about you know this table that script whatever um you'll see the eyes glaze over in about a heartbeat and if you're talking to a lot of the technical people they're going to want to know, okay, what is it that you need us to do? And for that, you may not need to be able to cite chapter and verse on code, but you have to be able to speak their language. And again, that goes back to the, the whole question of understanding your audience and having your communication skills. And maybe to connect to that uh, and connect to this slide on the tips, uh, what I tend to do with my mentees or coaches uh, is discuss this as the T-shaped model, where you have uh, a person with, with their own skills spread across different interests, right? So I think a, a, a platform owner or product owner uh, needs a good solid foundation at the base of the T uh, in both technical and in functional. And across the, the 10 years in the industry, I've seen platform owners that were really more on the technical side uh, and, and got support on the functional side from the business and vice versa, right? But then knowing yourself, plotting that T-shape and then a tip if you want to progress, uh, also think about where you want to see your T-shape heading uh, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. Um, And Scott had another follow-up yeah. question. Um, does the platform owner role typically own or drive roadmaps and what skills are needed for that? So I think I've seen it both ways, um, but I'm sure the rest of you could weigh in more on that. So more than a platform owner, I think it's the product owner who drives the roadmaps. But again, it depends on the organization uh, which you're working for. If you have defined uh, roles for different uh, jobs to do, I think uh, that will be defined under product owners. But if you do not have a specific product owner or a project manager, it's actually the platform owner who actually helps uh, creating the roadmap. So if the roadmap has already been defined at the organization level, they contribute to that, but not really owning or driving the roadmaps directly. I like Casey's comment here about, you know, smiling while you're on the phone. That's something that I learned back in the day when I had a side hustle of Mary Kay. And uh, I see Willem's welling on that. And then also read your emails before clicking send. Um, you know, 
a lot of times we feel like the faster we respond to something, the better. And it's not always the case. Sometimes you can let things sit for a little bit and sometimes they solve themselves. And then sometimes the next day when you go to send the email, you're like, oh my God, was I really going to say that? <laughs> so it's a, that's a really great tip there, Casey. I love also Casey's technical solution for it. He has set up a one minute delay in Outlook to give him the opportunity to uh, to read it. <laughs> oh, and Scott Carver, the courage to be disliked, nonviolent communication. Yes. I love the comment. Uh, the courage to be disliked is something uh, which I often face quite a few times because you know uh, business will come and tell you or ask you to do certain things which uh, you know as a platform owner that this is something which will be uh, heading towards a performance issue maybe, or maybe it will be a risk for the platform itself. So you are going to be the bad guy. <laughs> uh, so since we got a little break here, unfortunately I better stop this discussion because we're almost at the top of the hour. Um, this has been great. I hope it's been good for you. I've really enjoyed hearing from everybody and hearing from our experts. Um, great questions, solutions, whatever that are being put out there. And it looks like overwhelmingly the chosen topic for next month is organizational change management. So I'll get crack lacking on that. And um, here is um, a, a QR code you can scan to get to a community article where I'm posting the links to the upcoming events. Um, so you can see we have an event next week with Jerry talking about how to upgrade from a platform owner's perspective. And then in October, I'm going to be doing spooky topics for Halloween. Um, and so far, I've got Citizen Developer up there because I know some people think it's a little spooky to let citizens <laughs> develop in their platform. So more to come on that. And thank you all for coming. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody.